I can do everything through him who give me strength. Man is not a monster. Fear God and keep his commandments and delight in his way. Man is to rule. Man is to rule. Man is to rule. Greetings everyone and welcome to an exciting episode of Man and a Monster where we will be discussing different topics that affects the men of the church and how we can move forward in addressing these issues to make ourselves better men as we move on to spread the gospel of Christ. Today we have with us Bishop Wilbert Cameron. Welcome Bishop Cameron. Welcome sir. All right, before we begin, I'm just going to ask that you share a little bit about yourself, that the listeners will know who you are and what you have encountered. Okay, I am Pastor Cameron. I marry 51 years. I have nine children and a very lovely family. And I think I am really doing well. We're uh, taking care of them is concerned. And I hope that what we are saying today can help somebody to make himself a better person. Thank you very much. All right. So this is a man we consider with a lot of wisdom. Um, He has done it all. He has been um, working for basically all his life in different fields. And so he would be one of the best persons would be to to, to share his experience with us. Also co-hosting with us, we have... Trevon Roberts, who will be sharing um, as well as we go on into the discussion. So first and foremost, the Bible warns us or it shares with us in Genesis 2 verse 15. It says that when God created man, it says that and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Which therefore means that God expected men to work from the beginning. Um, He could have created everything and and just left it like that to, um, in a cycle where everything would have been all right. Man would not have done anything. But then um, he gave us instructions to work by putting man as example in the garden to dress it. And also Proverbs 12 verse 11 backs it up. And it says, he that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. So it's encouraging us to work from many aspects of the Bible. And so we are encouraging men to work. Yes, sir. So um, Brother Roberts here. And just to make the topic clear, the topic for today is by the sweat of our bro. So this is the men's podcast and we will be addressing some men, the issues that us uh, men face and will face if we're not facing them as ready. Because um, from since the dawn of time, God has set up men to be leaders and men have always been the providers. And we the society that we live, we live in today, because you find that sometimes women now are the ones that parents send to school and to get higher education. A lot of the times you find that in some families, um, the women make more money than the men. And then you find men that that's not what they want. They want a woman to take care of them. But that is not the way of God. It is not the way of the church. And we, which is why we have brought on Pastor Cameron, a man who has done it all to lead us um, in the way, to teach us the way in which we are to go as men today. So Pastor, can you just tell us some of the experiences that you have had in providing for your family, knowing that you have your family. You mentioned that you had nine children. So that's nine moles to feed. Let me make this quite clear. And having the nine, nine months of feed, Sister Cameron has never gone out to a job, not in one day, mm-hmm. out to a job. She stayed inside. Yes, she helped along with the children. And she also do dressmaking, making dress that I could get them to sell at the craft market. And, you know, she did things like those. But I think it, was, it is my responsibility It is my responsibility as a man to bring food in. And the reason for that is, when you're having children, the best person to stay with them is the mother. The best person to care them with the mother. And so I think the mother should stay home and take care of the children. Now, it's not easy when one person has to work. But there's something that I can tell 
young men, they are to do. No, there is not a moment from I'm married, there's not a moment that I don't find something to do. I'm a trade man. I, I learned electrician. I know it well. I can do it. House insulation, I can do it. But that was not all. I realized that that was not it. coming where I could have support or take care of the children or the wife. So I went and I do craft trading. And in doing craft trading, then you could have a wider feel that you could really, you know, make your money from. And so I do that. Now, I want to give you a little lowdown of my beginning. Mm -hmm. When I started to do craft, I was in a shop with a gentleman and we, had a, we, would have, we were a partner together. And so when we were partners together, we, I go to town like every week, I buy the stuff, we sell. But what I realized that after a time it gets slow and we have to break the partner up. I have to leave the shop. Leaving the shop, I still have a wife, I have to take care. So what I think to do, I start to go to Kingston, and I start to buy material, pants material, dress material, socks and all the different things. And I start selling. Okay. When that was not enough, I started, I, go, I went to Panama. Free, go, free zone. And I bought things in Panama. I went to Haiti. I went to Cuba. You know, and all these places just to find things to sell. And I sell. So I don't depend upon just one thing to take care of my family. When one thing gets slow, then I do something else. So it is incumbent upon every young man, not because they go to school, not because they have a trade, but you have to find food for your family. And you cannot because you don't have work and, and your profession or in a trade, you just say, no, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Because the word of God says, if you don't take care of your family, you're worse than an infidel. So that means it's incumbent upon every man to find food for their family. And so I... I have done actually everything, sir, to make sure that I have food for my family. All right. So because you've, you've led into a very interesting point there when you mentioned where somebody has an area of specialization. Right. The world that we live in today, no pastor, you find that we, we, the young people of today, we're more educated. Right. And what I've found is that with education comes a bit of shame. And what I mean by that is because we feel as if, because there are some people who feel as if, because I'm trained in this area, because I'm educated in this area, I'm not supposed to do certain things. Yes. So, for example, myself, I went to school and now I have a bachelor's degree in business administration, majoring in finance and minoring in accounting. But I went a year without having getting a job in finance or accounting. Right. Within that time, even though I had no family to take care of, I still wanted to have some money for myself. So I went into construction with my father. I went into construction with um with one of, one of my uncles. Has there ever been a time where you um you felt as if there are certain things that you wouldn't do? So yes, you were an electrician. You went to craft sale. You went to a, you turned a craft salesman. Then you went into a retail. Would you say would you was there any time was there ever a time when you thought that well I would do this but I wouldn't walk and sell bag juice or there's, was there ever a job that you found too demeaning to do? No, never. Never. And the reason for that is I admire the Apostle Paul. Though he was trained as a lawyer at the feet of Gamaliel, yet when he was converted, then he began to use tent as a means of living. Mm -hmm. That's where he gets his living from. Now, I have never, because when things get slow with me, and even when things are not slow, but I think a second job could have done it. Then what I do, I went, I went to town and I bought some uh, bottles and I bought a, a, a machine and I start selling bag juice. We, in those days we call it sky juice. Mm. So mm. we go to where the, where we go where the uh, function, like Duns River, like cricket. Yeah, match matches. and those things yeah. and we sell bad juice so i know that my family have to eat so i sell all these things there's no job i think mm -hmm. can considered you know like it is degrading or anything it's incumbent upon you to find food for your family 
and that's the most important thing. So I have gone that way, sir. I have sell sky juice. In those days, some people used to call it snowball and all mm -hmm. these things. We have, yeah. we, I go to, when I have to go to, I have to leave here. In those days, we were not as fortunate as today that you have factories all over. We have to leave Ochers and go to Kingston to buy the bulk syrup. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the straw and the bags and come back and sell bag juice. So there's no job in I think so. All right, so we, we understand that, as you said, you've done all these things in ensuring that you provide for your, your household. Yeah. And um, even earlier, you shared with us that your wife did not work, even though she, she assisted you in the, the different jobs that you did. She did not work on her own, basically. No. Right? No, we're living in a, a more liberated and modern society where both men and female try to work to ensure that they support their household. And as as Trevon said in, in his earlier comment, you have women that work, but they work more than their 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 husband. And a lot of husbands may feel um neglected or, or they, they not necessarily neglected insecure. insecure about that. But you have husbands who are okay with it. And um, that brings us to the, the, the scripture that you quoted earlier, first Timothy five verse eight. But if any provide not for his own and and spe especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Yeah. Um. So that speaks to if uh, if um any man we would have termed it that if they don't provide for their house, they're worse than an infidel. However, what would you would you encourage a man in this liberated society whose wife is working more money than him or his wife can support him? To become a houseman, meaning that he would have um, stayed home and do the, the, the culinary work. He'd yeah. cook, um, clean the house, take care of the kids while his wife goes out and work. Would we support that in under the doctrine of Mount Zion? No. I would never encourage a man to do that. That is wrong where the scriptures are concerned. No, we cannot follow modern society and destroy ourselves and destroy our home. Now, modern society would want us both to go out, leave the children, or get a nanny for them, or get a person to cook, clean, and wash, but that's not according to scriptures. Now, what we must understand that when you begin to have children, children need the mother's care and the father's care. And so I would not. Now we have to come to a conclusion and understanding that although the wife is in a better position where, where work is, job is concerned, getting more money, it's not the way of the church. The way of the church is that the man goes out and labor and bring him. Now there's something that will cause some problems. We had to go to America once, both of us. And I left her in America and I came home. And when I came home, I stayed for another three week, three months or something. And then I went back. And what she did, every cent that she had, she just never spent anything out of what she worked. She just put it in my hand. I am able to spend every cent. Now, the difference is with the modern society today, when a woman got to work, then she wants to spend the money the way she wants to spend it. And she wants to tell the man, look, I am getting more money than you, so you'll have to hear me. And that's wrong. So it would be best for them to, us to agree on something before the ladies go out to work, sir. Or the wife. Mm -hmm. Right. And and um again we, we, we realize that people people like to switch roles. But as you said, it's not it's not the way of the church. It's not the way of the church at all. Um to do that and, and switch roles. Um we we also realize too that you have some persons as brother roberts was sharing he went to school for business and he studied business and he came out um finding it difficult to work but then he knew that it was okay for him to do different things so he did any little thing that he could find to work however we have some who believe that we should have faith so we went to school for something we leave school we should have faith um should we then use faith to say we are going to sit out a specific time period or use faith to say that God will provide something in that field for us to work okay. and not work? Okay, two things. 
Faith is good, but faith without works is they've been alone. And also wisdom teaches us that look, there's a need. Because if you're not working, there's a need. Yes. And you cannot allow your family to suffer hunger or to suffer nakedness because you cannot find something in your field to do. You'll have to go out there, start doing something, as Brother Robert say, and when you start doing something, then have faith that God will provide something better for you. But you must at all times make sure that there's food, there's clothes, and there's security in your home. So regardless of you're going to wait, yes, you should wait, but you'll have to. Now, I said this to say that a lot of persons, even young persons, they, are, they want to go to school, but they don't have the money to go to school. And they prefer to borrow, they prefer to beg it, and they prefer to do other things to get the money. Now, I have Pastor Marson as an example. Pastor Marson passed all his exams to go to Michael College, but his father and his mother were able to send him. So what he did, he did, he went three years at Dr. McDowell, a dentist, mm -hmm. assist him, work with him, and when he makes, when he has enough money, then he stopped and he went to college. So I that person don't stop at what the what you see here now. Yes. Just persevere through it, work through it, and then you, you, you'll be okay. Which, 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 which leads me to ask you this question, Pastor, because we understand we're, we're from two vastly different generations. Right. Do you feel as if modern times and technology and education has made the modern man lazy in your perspective? Because we realize where you went from one um, thing to another, you're always at it, always at it, always at it. But you find that um, today, um, young men today would, would want to have it up the way how they want it. Instead of just taking life how life hands it to you, it's like you want to, you want to dictate how life should happen. Do you, do you think the modern man today, based on technology and just the happenings of the time, has become lazy? Yeah. Yes, I think so. But it should not be for those of the church of God. The men of the church should learn the words of God and be directed by the word of God. And when you are guided by the word of God, then you are able to, uh, to do according to what the scripture says. Now, the man out there is different. He has no guide. He has no, uh, what have you, nobody to instruct him. But the church of God gave all the instruction to the young people how they ought to go about things, sir. So then, I think the church should set example for the other people for the young generation, the other person out there, by working accordingly. And and lastly, um, as we go get draw closer to closing. Lastly, you have those of the the opinion that um, if it's not something in in um something reputable, then I I will not do it. Um, but then. In, especially in Jamaica, the Jamaican society, we have a lot of farmers out there that have their, their, their little um, farm that they, they, they have. Do you think that youth, um, young men, should start something on their own um, in terms of becoming an entrepreneur? Or is it okay to just vast out there um, and aim for the regular working world? Yes, sir. I think young men should as i said the church they should uh do whatsoever they are able to do now we have to look at the world that we are living in the world that we are living in is that because of the job that you get the pay you get the pay towards it mm -hmm. but the same person or the same young man that will tell that they don't that not, they're not doing farming out here they go to America, they go to Canada do farming. That's true. The That's same true. young men. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because they're getting more money. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. So, but what they should have understand is that, look, God will prosper me. And there's nothing too menial to do. And as long as you find something to do, God will prosper you. So I don't think we should wait. As long as you have the land, you can farm. If you're a farmer, I mean, maybe you can do ground provision as well as you can do poultry or anything. But I think as a young man, 
first thing you have to consider is to have something on your own that you are able to assist somebody. Yes, I, I completely agree with you there, sir, because we find that, especially because of Corona, yeah. Corona has forced a lot of us to be very, um, to get very unique in how we earn an income. Yeah. Because when you look on, like, persons who used to drive, not, not drive tourists, that's not much of a thing anymore. And right. There's so many persons who have been laid off and so many areas that have been affected entire things. So you find that now we have to become... Um, more entrepreneurial, so you find that in the church there are more persons trying to raise chickens, there are more persons trying farming, there, there are more persons trying um, varying things, which, which backs up what you said, um, especially for us as young men today. We cannot be of the um, opinion that there are certain things that we cannot do or Can there are certain it? things that are beneath us because you find that in it, it, this, I believe that this point of view, it will cause us to have a wrong view of God. So you find that somebody will, will not be willing to do anything and then you will say that God doesn't provide. It's because you don't want anything, you don't want it bad enough then or, or you won't stoop down to where God has the provision right. because you have your eyes set on the, the mountain top and the higher plane. Okay. So so what I wanted to do now as we're, as we're going into our closing, we wanted to give a distinct statement to especially young men today who will be, who have the, the, the vision or the, 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 have their mind on one day be going into marriage and having a family the mindset that they should have and the, 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 the temperament and the mentality that they should have moving forward because we know that we live in an uncertain world and like job we might just hear one day a news from the west that whatever was going on for us is no longer there a news might come from the south and from the east so anything can happen to us because we were put in this world not for the, the joys of this world but to suffer here that we may reign with God when you do so come our call. So what message do you have for the young men looking to get married and looking to go into um, the whole ordeal of family? Okay, for the young men, I think I have a message for them. As you have stated that because of the virus, many persons have lost their income mm -hmm. and so they have to think of something else. That could go for my son. He has a coaster. And, and he's a vice president of the Jewish Association. But things get so bad that ships stop, tourists stop coming. I don't even have to make a, a coop for the fowl and have raise some creative. chickens. Have to get creative. And raise some chickens. Mm -hmm. So I think what young men want to do is to have a steady head. Know what are your goals and work towards it. You may not get there overnight, but as long as you work, you'll get there. Now, as we are talking about the working, that's what helps you. You must make a foundation for tomorrow you're thinking about marrying, and if you don't have a foundation, it'll be very difficult for you to maintain that unity and that oneness as it ought to be in the home. And so, I would encourage all the young men, just like what the Bible says, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it. Amen. It may be not what you'd want to do, but it's what God allowed you to do, mm -hmm. you do it. Yes, and I think the blessings of God can come from any angle, anywhere. So as long as you set out your work, you set out the work, God will increase it. And so I encourage you, as young people, that you set a goal and work towards it. As I've said, don't wait until you reach the time to marry. Make some preparation before you get there. I make preparation before I get there, and that was what saves me. Because you have to understand that you are not in control of the body's God. And sometimes when you marry, just as you marry, children start coming. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very difficult if you don't have income coming in, yeah. how are you going to take your, your, your children? And we don't want the church to go begging and asking persons to assist them because we are the church, we are the head and not the tail. So I think we ought to serve, make some proper foundation, save all that we can as we know, it's not what you earn, it's what you save. Try and save all that you can know before you go into marriage. 
When you're going to marry, you're going to need all of those money because you cannot. Somebody says, look, it's only two times you must show that you have money. Is when you have a car or when you have children, they can, they can be any accident at mm. any time. Mm. So you have to make sure that you are able to take care. That is why Jesus said in his word, if you are going to build a house, you must First, sit consider. down and consider it before you build it. Lest when you reach pathway and you can't finish it, then people laugh at you. So I'm saying to you, don't allow people to laugh at you in your marriage because you're married to take care of the wife. And regardless of what she's earning, that is not it, what you ought to do. And I don't want no young men stay home, wash and cook and clean while the wife goes. I don't want that in the church. You are the, you are the head and not the tail. Mm-hmm. You are be the awesome. lead. Awesome. And when you do that, the wife sometimes lost respect for you. Mm-hmm. You understand? So she must gain that respect that you are there to, not only to comfort, but to support. Not only support, but to maintain. Not only to maintain but to have control over the entire situation yeah. as a young man that you are able to prosper. So I encourage you, look again how you ought to do. And regardless of where you are educated, where you are coming from, when you start with the Lord, you have to understand that it's not every time you're going to get the job that you desire. Mm-hmm. You will never have to get that all the time. But you have to start somewhere and the Lord will bless you. My son started at the San Susie Hotel as a store clerk, and then he's now an assistant manager somewhere. As as you have to start somewhere, and the Lord will bless you. So I encourage you to work and to consider the Word of God more so. This is what the Word of God is saying, and that's why I'm saying to those, to us as brethren, unless we can measure up to the Word of God, it doesn't make sense. Because the Bible is saying to us, that we ought to be able to take care of the family and to make sure that they are secure. So in so doing, sir, I think that would be able and not only when because when the home is okay, the church will be okay and the society will be okay. But if, the, but if the home is not okay, then the church will not be okay and the society will not be okay. Mm-hmm. But when we are allow ourselves to be guided by God's word, I think that's the best way to do it, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be here with us, Pastor Bishop Cameron. We heard it from the leader of the flock himself. There is no shame in work. No. Work is what we have to do as men. There's also nothing wrong with being in a family or a relationship where the woman might be making more, but that does not give you the right to not act, act within the confines of a man. Man supposed to stand up, man supposed to be strong, and a man is supposed to provide. Thus said the words of the living God. Thank you again, and we we do hope that you, the Lord, continues to keep you, sir, as you inspire both young and old as a man of God. Let us, we're, in closing, we leave this verse with you, Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. It says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. As men, we don't need guide, overseer, or ruler to work. We have to do our part as men so that, as he said, um, the home will be good, the church will be good, and at large, society will be better. Thanks for listening, listeners, and we hope that you will continue to tune in as we come back with more episodes of Man on a Monster. Be blessed. Fear God and keep his commandments and delight in his way man is to rule man is to rule man is to rule